know, I thought we'd battle through it. Their big guys are very good. They do a great job of getting the ball inside. And, you know, we just are not able to defend the inside this year. Uh, we've got six, eight days of two games and some practices to try to get better down in there. But uh, we got a little active at the end there. You know, I had this cheer trying to get somebody to make some noise. It's sad, sickening, really, to see that, that we can't get some help here. We, we desperately need it, and it picked up our defense just enough that we got a couple deflections and made a couple plays out of it. But, you know, we, we have to have some help there. That's why the, that's the whole purpose of playing at home. They're a pretty good team. They're solid. They, they know what they're doing. Physical, tough guys. And they're a team that can hurt us inside. We've seen a lot of big guys that are pretty good. And those those two guys are good, just like the last game. I mean, we have trouble with those guys. And we're always going to have trouble with those guys, period. <laughs> they were in position every time. They just, when they get it down in there, they, they can't stop them. The guy outweighs them 100 pounds. Yeah, both guys. Both guys are outweighed by 100 pounds. There's nothing they can do. They're in position. There's nothing they can do down there. The only way we can help is to even go back more, and that's just a dangerous thing to do. If you do that, especially against some teams, you're dead. Because they'll just make 12 threes. You know, that's, then you're loose. We can still win this way. We can still win this way. But it's going to be a fight every game. That's just the way it is. We'll see you Saturday. Welcome to the Q's Militia Podcast with those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. What's up, Q's Nation? Thanks for tuning in to the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. If you like it, please share it. The universal handle for the socials is at Q's Militia. Go there. Join the militia. We are the only Syracuse sports podcast centered around giving you the fans a voice. Welcome. Happy Thursday. Yes. Less than a week till Christmas. And you know what I forgot, Joe? And I'm kicking myself right now so hard for this. I'm so pissed. I forgot our Christmas jingle open and close. Do you remember I had that last year? I'm so pissed. No, I don't remember. I just thought about that just now. Yes, you remember. Shut up. Because you hated it. I know. Rate, re- rate, review, and subscribe. Whatever platform you listen on, we appreciate it. And we appreciate all of you who have done so already. You never know if you do. Read it on the air uh, from iTunes, and maybe we'll send you something. So, yep. uh, Oakland misses enough threes to lose to Syracuse, 74-62. to 62. Syracuse improves to 6-5, and 1-1 uh, one one in ACC, and 4-0 and oh against the Golden Grizzlies all time. Um, so Joe, we heard, we'll go over that by the way. And also, um, North Florida is going to come into the dome on Saturday at six o'clock and yes, sir. we will talk about that briefly. Uh, but first the, the controversy of the night wasn't so much the game itself, but what coach Beheim had to say after about the fans, you know, I don't remember the last time I saw the dome look like that. There's been, you can blame it on the snow, you know, you can blame it on the stars, you know, that fly by night, but (laughs) whatever you do, you know, don't put the blame on you. You know what I mean? So, (sighs) yeah. (laughs) So, so you can blame, yeah, that was tough. You can blame it on the snow. You can blame it on whatever you want. I've seen snow. I've seen bl- blizzards with more more people in the dome than that. So, yep. with that said, coach's comments, Joe. I'm gonna let you hit this first. You and I haven't talked about it really. Um, what do you think? A little harsh? It's just upset. Is he frustrated? Is he taking it out on the fans? What's going on? Uh, he just is who he is, right? And that's just kind of how he would react if a player played bad. He just, <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, he is right. Uh, we're supposed to have that home court advantage, you know, with the uh, attendance records that we've broken and, you know, just the dome. And just when you think that, you just think loud. A lot of people, uh, even when there's non conference games, there was usually, you know, more people than what most venues get on their best day. 
So it's definitely frustrating to see that um, on TV or not. You know, I mean, it was on ESPNU, so you know, it was kind of easily easily viewed. Um, so just was not a good look for sure. No, it was and a I little. Can, I can understand his frustration. Again, we talk about that all the time. I I understand People. his frustration, and I don't think. You know, he issued an apology on Twitter today. Um, let me see if I can search this real quick. I did not think about pulling this up. Um, uh, let me see. He, he said, I have said many times that we have the best college basketball fans in the country, and I still feel that way. My comments last night were about the atmosphere during parts of the game, not about our fans. Our team responds to their support and did against Oakland. And he's exactly right. He didn't call out the fans. He called out the crowd. If anything, if you want to put a blanket on it, called out the crowd. And the crowd really was just okay. But they were loud when they got excited. There was a couple huge, huge, huge slams. And right. they got up for those. So they let us know they were there. And it definitely got loud. But, I mean, whatever. You know, at some level, he has um, a, he has a good point. And people can be upset. Well, we're blaming the fans. Well, I mean, look, I didn't see it as blaming the fans. I saw it as if you're going to show blaming up to the, fans the game. For what? Well, for not being loud. He's, well, that's what he was defending. But they won. Right. Well, okay. No, okay. Bl- you see what I'm saying? Words. Though it's like I just don't. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But there was people who were upset with his tr- the choice words he had for the crowd. I should say. Right. Okay. But his point is, you know. I guess if you're going to show up, be there to be loud, be there to be loud, be there to, you know, show up. If you're going to show up, show up. Just What's the point of showing up and sitting there and just being a bump on right. the log? You know what? You know what you're going to watch. You're going to watch Syracuse, Oakland. I So that's his, <laughs> that's his point, right? If you're going to yeah. take the time to go there, make some damn noise. That's all. That's how I saw it. Got it. Yep. So, um, and it seems, by the way, while we're talking of, do I go here? <laughs> so it seems that the the standing and clapping uh, stuff uh. is is I'm seeing it more and more. Barstool Cuse tweeted about it last night. You could say, well, that's you know, it could be a coincidence. I doubt it. So it is. And you think it's a coincidence? I don't. Uh, I think that um, you know, there's some loud opinions out there about it for for both sides. In fact, so you know, there was people. Yeah, just huh? Just a lot of fans. Just a lot of fans speak. A lot, a lot of, of fans speak going on. Yeah, and I mean, it's fun. So, and it's okay to disagree. It's just it's not okay to be disrespectful about it, I suppose. But you can be disrespectful about it, I guess. I don't really care. Um, but you know, we, we, I threw up the tweet. It's always different when you throw a tweet on Facebook because it's so, it's so, it's, it's just kind of a, I don't know. It's the mixture of two platforms, but you got, right. um, you got a uh, Steph. She says, leave this tradition alone. Andrew says, dumb and stupid. Quoting Barstool Sports. Looks like someone just found the thesaurus. Mm. <laughs> so anyways, can't <clears throat> mess, Chris says, can't mess with tradition. Not 41 years. Um, mm. so, and then Jay, Jay says, he makes a good point. Somehow Duke fans managed to stand the whole game. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Their student section's pretty good. Yeah, well, that's different. Yeah, I know. Um, totally. Well, if you different. don't want to mess with tradition, then why is everyone calling for Bayheim to switch up to two, three zone? Since that's what we've been doing, right? Yeah. If you want to, if you want to lay it at that. Yeah, I mean, sure. at some point, like, again, I just brought it up to question it. And again, you brought up some history in which, I mean, how, we didn't start um, it. We ripped it off. It's not like we're talking about the alma mater from the beginning <laughs> of like the university's conception, right? I right, mean, we're talking right. about something like you said that we ripped off from somebody else. And all I did was just ask questions. That's all. Right. But again, last night you saw another situation where what? I mean, both times it was what? <laughs> three, three and a half minutes. And yeah, it's painful to watch, and you see people question it. And I will, again, I will guarantee you the people take notice now that listen to us or on social media or whatever. When those long droughts go at the beginning of halves, people right. will people will cringe a little bit more as they watch that because they're going to be. I mean, paying again, more it's just. To it. I mean, are they? Is everyone wasting all their energy 
to stand and clap and try to stay at the same pace, which they never do. And everyone messes up, and then the beat gets messed up, and I just in the, by the time the bats gets made, and then all of a sudden you have Beheim talking about how the crowd doesn't have any energy. I just don't. I just don't understand. But again, like it's not like we're trying to like stop it or end it or you know. It's just again, we're just questioning it. I'm, if I was at a game, I would stand and clap. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, so would I. This isn't like a. So would I. You know, again, so. It was a it was a weak clap action last night. By the way, I could barely hear it. So yeah, anyway, yeah, all right, fun. we're gonna we are going to get into all of the fun doings that I have already explained. But first, I want to start off with telling you about Blue Chew. Blue Chew sponsors Armchair Media and this show. So uh, if you want to increase your performance, get extra confidence in bed. Listen up, um, BlueChew.com. It's blue like the color. Blue Chew brings the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know it works. You can take them anytime, day or night, on a full or empty stomach, and since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as the pill, so you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. And if you could benefit from extra function and more confidence when it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online, and it ships straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person since doctors visit, no waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than the pharmacy right now. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the special promo code ARMCHAIR. Just pay the $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code ARMCHAIR. Try it for free. Blue Chew is better, cheaper, and a faster choice. And we thank them for sponsoring. And as always, they do not promise any guaranteed results. And nowhere do they claim that it cures disease. So... Joe. Damn. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that foot thing you got. Blue Chew will, <laughs> will not help that at all, Joe. So, uh, between Hughes with 20, Gerard with 20, and Bayheim with 14, the Orange gathered enough points uh, to pull off the win in a sparsely filled Carrier Dome. It comes as no surprise to me, and maybe some of you, that Syracuse's shooting started slow. Uh, the stand and clap, as we mentioned, lasted close to four minutes to the start at the start of the game. Um, I expected, I think they must missed like their first five shots or something like that. Uh, yeah. I, I expected Syracuse to struggle down low, especially in the the beginning um but that's just an every game thing now and i don't expect too much out of that i thought they'd do a little bit better against oakland but um you know instead they chucked up like 34 uh three pointers they made 11 for 32.4 percent uh thankfully the golden grizzlies struggled from distance hitting four of 18 one of those four though that's 22.2 percent one of those four though a Hail Mary from half court as the time as the <clears throat> shot clock was expiring and we all dropped one in our drawers. Like, is this how this is gonna go? Are you serious? So yeah, uh, a couple moments like that last night. Yeah, Syracuse was outscored in the paint thirty to twenty. Um is there's just not enough muscle down there. Uh maybe Quincy Garrier finds his way at some point, I hope, soon. And we can get something going down there, but until then, kind of, it is it, 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 what you see is what you get. Um, I played and, better last night. Yeah, it was a. Um, if we're judging by um, his two points and his two rebounds in the twelve minutes, I would say it was just mediocre from Quincy. But um, uh, Sadibi, a solid thirteen rebounds, uh, but not much else. But I'll take the rebounds. Thirteen rebounds, pretty good. So, um, yep. he played for, he, he played just over what, 23 minutes or something like that. But, you know, Joe, yeah. it's hard to judge these types of games. Uh, you know, um, usually we bury teams like Oakland and, and there's not much to say and there's not much to be worried about, but, um, especially since with the one win that we're hanging on, uh, hanging our hats on right now is against Georgia tech and they lost at home by 18 against ball state. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, we're going to see these next four games at home, two non-conference, two conference games, um, what we got going on. But um, I don't know. What do you think? I guess I guess my point is, is that normally 
we can pull some positives and we and we can pull positives out of this but are the are they false positives do you understand what i'm saying uh, yeah uh, i mean they they were a tougher team uh, like we talked about they were big and kind of senior laden the two guys that killed us down low uh both seniors so uh again you want to look at the positives but i think again until somebody steps up this team is kind of what it is uh we're going to shoot a lot of threes and we had a, a lot of open shots that we missed last night, so I don't think that last night is going to be your average shooting day, especially you know considering that our opponents are going to get better here, so we're definitely not going to be able to shoot like that. Uh, he made it very clear in his press conference that he doesn't want Merrick or Quincy shooting threes anymore, and they were over three, so you take that away. Everyone else is 11 for 31, and I, again, think that will be better because they did get open shots, so... Uh, I think it just goes to the story of the season that when it comes to your next opponent, you have to look at their size and their big men and their ability to score around the basket. Because if it's there or if it's present or above average, then we're going to have a problem. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we'll get into that a little bit. But, I mean, I mean, well, how do you think the defense is playing out? Because... I don't know. I heard people. I mean, say, we I caused, people saying we they, caused they, more turnovers, huh? Yeah, and we did not turn the ball over very much at all. We, right. What did we turn the ball over seven times or something like that? Right. So we and did. We a good did job. close the rebounding gap. We did. We did. But albeit Oakland, I get it. But again, right. they we, did have size. It wasn't like they didn't have size. That's true. We had Sadibi with thirteen. So if he can do if. Uh, this is why I hate sometimes going here. No, but it, if it's, he could, it's, I get it. If he could do that, then that's that's what happens, right? He's in in charge. He's he's the guy in charge of getting that gap closed up. He's the main guy that's 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 there to do that. So, um, if, right. if he doesn't get it done, if he's not getting it done, then no one else is picking up that slack. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah, well, so. again, that's where you'd like to see Quincy coming in and help. But and that's what I was saying earlier, exactly, yeah. I but thought- it's shown that he can't. And when I talked about playing better, I mean, yeah, put it in perspective of what he did last game. Came in and got two quick fouls, got pulled. I mean, he barely played, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's true. That's true. So he looked a little bit better. That's true. He didn't look bad. He wasn't off that by that much, so. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but again, I don't see I don't my takeaway is that it's kind of they're getting a little bit better of, at what they're doing every game. You might not be able to see it because that's maybe that minute of how much they're getting better, but they are getting a little bit better. But again, until certain players step up, uh, you kind of what you see is what you get. So if Sadivi can't step up and, and close that gap or Gary A can't come out and give us some some points and rebounds off the bench then we're just going to be this jump shooting team that's going to rely on, you know, Elijah, Buddy, and Joe to hit shots after shots after shots to keep us in games. Yeah, and I mean, Buddy did hit, you know, he was 3 for 11. Uh, Gerard was 3 for 10. I guess Gerard, this is probably his best full game I've seen in a while since I think, what was it, Cornell maybe or something? When he, uh, 20, po- 20 points, 7 assists, 2 steals. And only one turnover. So he took care of the ball. Yep. And that's kind of what... That is what Joe is going to be. That that right there is what Joe is going to be uh, consistently, hopefully, when we're, you know, after he gets a year under his belt, maybe next year um, in, in, in for the rest of his career at Syracuse. I feel like that's the player he's going to be. So it's just got to... Yeah. He's just got to get the consistency, man. And I think Buddy... Once Buddy and, and Joe gel... I feel like, first of all, I feel like Joe is becoming more consistent than Buddy and with less experience. Yeah, and but again, they're getting shot. They're getting open shots. They are. But comes they missed a lot of open shots. It comes well, right, and that's what I mean. It comes down to hitting them, and I think from what I've seen, those guys are shooters. So Absolutely. again, there's going to be some good days and there's going to be some dead, bad days, I and mean, that's the story of a jump shooting team's life. You rely by you rely by the jump shot, shot. Then there's going to be days where everything seems to to go in, and the basket's as big as the ocean. And then there's going to be other days where we might lose a bad game to a bad team because we can't hit anything. Right. And that's what it started to look like early uh, against Oakland, and I was a little nervous. And even then, 
I mean, I know we climbed out and it seemed like we had control, but they were so many times just one three pointer away from making this way too close to call. Yeah, Amy, my wife was like, you know, are they going to lose this game? Like, no, I don't lose this game, but I mean, it's it's a little close. (laughs) I wasn't ever really that worried about it, but it was a little too close for comfort for me. It was just, you know, you kind of saw it coming for the whole game. We never really, what did we pull away by 11 or something at one point? No, no, yeah, but at some point, I mean, I knew there was a, a time around the six minute mark where they got it within five. So after we had already been up. 14 12 oh yeah so yeah 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 so uh you know you get those those type of situations where you know a play here a play there and now you have ball game so uh maybe that is one positive we can speak to even though albeit oakland uh we were in a closer game and it was close and we ended up pulling away to a double digit win yeah we didn't cover the spread but i know right by what, a half point or something like that so, I thought it was 14, but was it 14? No, I think James posted James Zuba posted 12 and a half, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought so. I thought I saw that. Oh, okay. Um yeah. oh. All right. Well, do mm, we point. want do we want to talk to the fans or do they do we want to read the fans? Hmm? I mean, sure. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Before No, why are you asking me like we're not going to do it? Huh? Well, I'm just making sure so, you don't have anything else to say. Because you're very, you're very unenergetic tonight, Joe. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, God, here I'm, we I'm go. A, I'm a little disappointed. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But <laughs> look, my bookie, longtime sponsor of the show. We appreciate them. But um, they're still running this deal. Either they're really still running this deal, or I just have not gotten an updated read. For my bookie, so here we go. <laughs> Past, present, and future, my bookie players. Look, if you've been online, you know what to expect. Go to my bookie, the best sports book on the internet. If you haven't tried it, check it out. See if it's right for you. Uh, but it doesn't matter whether you're an experienced player or a first-time customer. My bookie welcomes all that come to play. Uh, do uh, do you find yourself wanting to know a little bit more about sports betting? Have some questions? Well, my bookie's patient customer service team can walk you through the process. Uh, and the best part is if you join now and you just log on to mybookie.ag and you make your first deposit using the promo code CHAIR, C-H-A-I-R, uh, mybookie will match your deposit dollar for dollar up to 1000 bucks to jumpstart that bankroll again. Let me repeat that. Log on to mybookie.ag. Make your first deposit using the promo code CHAIR and mybookie will match your deposit dollar for dollar up to $1 thousand dollars that's right wow yeah it's so awesome so <laughs> this is the part of the show where uh we read your comments so let's do it it's time to hear from you the loud mouths from the loud house all right you know the routine here. You go to the socials after the games. I propose a question to give your thoughts on the game. It is our post-game thread, essentially, is what it has become. So, yes. give us your thoughts on the game. Let's start with Twitter. At Cat- oh, at Joe Catskill. He says, good win. You can see the team is still struggling, but wins are a good thing. JG3 continues to improve. It is it is possible Cuse had is it is it possible Cuse has too many shooters? Crazy ref, referees in terms of fouls called calls. Let the boys play. Joe, is it possible they have too many shooters? Now I uh, n- I no. Can, I can see where he's coming from. Now, if we had, if we hadn't been is that a real thing? If if we, well, if we haven't been a, it would be nice to have some guys drive a lane once in a while, be able to do some stuff like that. It really would. No, yeah, but that's not what we're talking about here. I I know, I know, but I'm just saying, if I had to choose, you know, three shooters, I mean, you know, it's here's why I say we can't have too many because we haven't had many in the past few years, right, Joe? So I mean, can you have too many? I don't. I don't think so, because someone's bound to be high, uh, right? I mean, I can understand what you're talking about as far as maybe not having the balance of yeah certain scoring. That would be my only Jim, point. 
Right, and Jim Beheim talked about that about how he thought that Buddy and and uh, Eli had to find ways to to get to the free throw line um, more consistently because I think that all three guards are you know they're good free throw shooters. So well, Joe Girard, he gets in the line ninety six percent from the line right now. I think something like that, probably even more. Probably, even but more. either. But yeah, so again, we talked about that last podcast about those guys being able to get to the to the rim and get some free easy buckets and slow the game down to where you know they can rest a little bit, you know, because uh, they are going to be playing a lot of minutes. So yeah, I want to see Joe Girard get to the line more. He tends to do this thing yeah. where he dribbles into dribbles into a lane and then like you know does a U turn. <laughs> backs out yeah. or kicks or kicks it back out. Sometimes it works, but sometimes I just want him to finish it. Uh, at, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, at, mm-hmm. or, and he'll get used to it. I think it's maybe a comfort thing, or maybe it's his style of play. But I think it's more of a comfort. Well, thing. sometimes, well, sometimes too. What you, you don't want to do is drive into the lane and pick up your dribble. So if he gets in a situation where he doesn't think that he can maybe take advantage or get to the free throw line, then he would be picking up his dribble and then that would maybe put him in an even worse position. So uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's like a quarterback throwing the ball away instead of throwing an interception or trying to force it in there. So, right. yeah. Um, at Orange Faithful, I'll take the W. It's just not going to be pretty most nights. JG3 was aggressive. Quincy did some good things. All about growth. And, yeah, and I mean, I see it. I do see it. I mean, you know. It's, that's it's it's and that's what it's all and then that's kind of that was going to be the word of the season we talked about that yeah absolutely and it's kind of um you know it's easy to say it before the season starts but but yeah. and, and to say hey we're not setting expectations but yeah but go yeah. back to our first couple of podcasts and we talked about that we talked about the growth and we talked about how there were going to be some tough games to watch there's going to be some ugly growing pains and i'll take an but ugly to able- win over you know a pretty loss, yeah. I say. Right. A win is a win, right? So. Right, absolutely. So, um, At DFIN01, Buddy wasn't anywhere to be found in the second half, along with Jesse Edwards. Would have liked to seen him get some run. What Jesse play? I, crap, I don't have that. He, I think seven he, minutes. Yeah, and he, he did some things. He's long as hell, boy. He just needs some meat on his bones. For yeah. Out loud. No, he looks like but he's it, got the frame to put some meat on there, so hopefully... Yeah. Make uh, that happen. Buddy, yeah, he needs to put together two halves, two solid halves. Now, if he's going to have one crappy half and then score 25 points in the other, I'm almost okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it, you know, it is what it is. It's never going to be perfect. But, uh, oh, man, let's see. Uh, well, he's a streaky shooter. I mean, that's what he's yeah, proven. Uh, yeah. I mean, Once he remember, starts hitting a couple, he can go on a little bit of a run, you know, and then he goes through a little bit of other dry spells. I did mean. we ever podcast when we had Trevor Cooney? Was that a thing? Did we? I don't think we did. I think he was before the podcast. Anyway, he you could see if he wasn't confident and he was shooting the ball, he was just going to miss all night. Like, it, But once he got – if he got going early, I mean, he was dangerous. He could go. He could go right. on a run. He can go on. You know, and that's just it's just like the shooter's mentality, man. It's all. It's a lot of it's mental. You know, if you start, right, if you and just, that's and the coach sees it in practice, and he knows what these players can do, right? So, uh, when you're a shooter like that, and you can get hot like that, you just don't stop shooting. The only way to get out of that slump is to keep shooting. So, um, you know, you're not going to make one or get out of that slump if you're not shooting. Uh, that's just their strengths, and that's what they're going to do. I mean, they talked about it, and you saw it. I mean, we shot 34 threes. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, you ready for more? <laughs> at T. Business, my thoughts are if we had a center as capable offensively as even the effing Oakland center, we'd be a top 25 team. <laughs> 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 that's good. Uh-huh. I love that comment. I've this guy. That's a good. That's a good comment. <laughs> I've yeah. never. I've never seen this guy on Twitter. He's never commented before. But that's a. <laughs> that's a valid point. Kudos. <laughs> I don't know what else to uh, say. That guy just seemed to be everywhere at the right time, and he just everything bounced in the right way. I know. Guy, guy randomly goes eight for eight from the free throw line. So I know he goes eight for eight for eight from the free throw line, and he's got twenty points. And it's just yeah. like it's just like 
Go figure. We're not going to mention the fact he looks older than me. <laughs> Go but... figure. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't know. He's got his hair. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, burn. Big, <laughs> big excuse fan. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, like Donna Ditota said, uh, they scored enough to win. The defense was okay, but they still have no production in the middle and can't cover anyone down there. Edwards should get more run. It couldn't hurt. I don't see a problem with throwing Edwards down. Joe, we talked about this. Edwards, Washington, Gary A. I know this game was close, and it was a little tough to throw one of these throw these guys down there, but if I had to pick... Well, if I had to pick one of them, it'd probably be Gary A. But Jesse Edwards is is right there too. And what about? I mean, like we all jumped off the Robert Braswell train so quick. What's going on? You know, I mean, obviously. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we haven't seen him. I haven't heard anybody talking about him. He, I was I, never on it. Oh, I know you weren't. I know. <laughs> That's true. Touche. But, yeah. but he's a fan. He's kind of a fan favorite. So, um, okay. Okay. Well, obviously he's not doing anything in practice. Oh, is that why the crowd was quiet last night? No, that's why they were standing and clapping. And then they realized he wasn't coming out. So they sat down. They, they -hmm. gave it a good solid four minutes though. So, okay. Yeah. So Beheim's just not, he's not playing the answer. That's right. That's just, well, no, that's not my point at all. I mean, I think that he should be able to use Edwards. Huh? My my point is this, Joe, is that obviously he's not using Braswell for a reason. It's probably what he sees in practice. So there's something there. Practice. There's a reason. The practice, there's a reason he's not using them. But as far as Jesse Edwards goes, that's where we're hurting. Why not freaking throw him down there more? I know last game was not a good game to do it, like I said, but yes, it couldn't hurt. I agree with Big Q's fan. It couldn't hurt. Yeah, and when you have that much of like weight discrepancies, and again, when you're going against some I of your other it. opponents, I know it. You can't like not afford to, like you can't afford to be afraid to not be physical. You understand? So like, it's one of those things where if you are giving up 40 pounds, and on top of that, you are playing soft or safe, so you don't get fouls or foul out. Uh, that's just a recipe to get killed. So I, I would like to see more of a, a balanced minutes between Jesse Edwards and him and just kind of coach them up to be almost like work as a, a pair, knowing that you're going to give up fouls, but go out there and just be physical. Yeah, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to get fouled. The other guy's going to come in. And CDB almost falls out every game anyway. So Yeah, I know. I mean, what the hell? Realistically, it's just you, just, you got to somehow try to motivate them to get in there and try to be a little bit more physical. And sometimes that plays a mental aspect into the other opponent uh, when you do play them. Um, so I think that's really the only way that we could probably get better down there because we're not getting 30, 40 pounds on either of them in, in during the season. So... You just have to try different tactics. And if it means just maybe motivating them and teaching them to maybe play more of a mauler, more physical type game down there and in defense, then you just share their fouls and just know that both of them are going to be part of it. Um, yeah. On to Facebook. Timothy from Facebook says – they won. Gerard three had a good game. Yes, he did. Uh, I got to tell you, if we can get into the tourney, we will be dangerous, especially if we get hot from three and can rebound. Go orange. Well, that, Timothy, is very optimistic. Um, I think that it, <laughs> there's not – dude, when you look at the, the, the landscape of college basketball, there's not great – Great teams this year. No, ACC. Uh, you've seen looks so down. many number. Yeah, not even yeah. ACC. I'm talking throughout the country. So many yeah. number one, number ones have lost. It's like a record yeah. amount of number, like number one teams that have lost up well, to this. Two point. of them are in the ACC, right? Yeah, Louisville and Duke. Right. And again, yeah, the tournament you're going to see good teams, but not every team that's going to make this tournament has a scoring offensive center. So. And the way that we can shoot, like I said, maybe we haven't seen it. Did we say that going into often. Oakland? What's that? <laughs> Did we say that going into Oakland? They don't have a scoring offensive center? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Well, no, we knew that they had a really big 
six, seven Hills maze guys who was going to be hard to move around. Right. And then that six ten center, I didn't know that he was going to be as efficient as he was. So maybe, like I said, he was in just right place, right time type situation, but he was very efficient last night as well. And again, it was the down low guys. So, uh, but like what Beheim said, when you can do that and kind of minimize the other team's three pointers, then you can win some of the other battles as far as turnover and, and keep rebounds close. Uh, and you can shoot well from the three-point line, you can make that stuff up. So that's going to be our best recipe to win this year. And when it gets to the tournament, if you have shooters, then anything can happen. Zach on Facebook says, was at the game. It's going to be a long season without a presence in the paint. It's deeply concerning against Oakland. Sure, it's fine. But we got to figure something out. Gerard was basically the only person attempting to drive the majority of the time. So, I mean, this is the glaring hole in Syracuse this year. Obviously, we've talked about it. We just got done talking about it. I think we talked about it before we talked about it. So, yeah. And it just goes back to what you just said, Joe. I mean, we're not going to repeat ourselves. But, obviously, yeah. it doesn't hurt to um, play with some things, especially with these next two games. You know, we'll talk about North Florida in a second. But um, you got to kind of um, – you gotta, yeah. gotta, you gotta kind of settle into the game and get it started before you can see what you can, what you can do or what you need to do. So I guess there's that. You know, you don't want to lose one of these games by by screwing around. So yeah, um, no. Right. And again, at some point, what you have is what you have, and some things you're not gonna be able to fix throughout a season. So you just have to find different ways around it. And what we've talked about, like tonight in the last podcast, were ways to you know use. You know, use your brain, be smart about the game to put your opponent in difficult situations. And again, uh, the last comment kind of hit on it with being able to take people to the hole, get people in foul trouble, you know, other ways to try to score efficiently, like from the free throw line, instead of just hucking up there. Yeah, we're a good three point shooting team or we have good shooters. But to sit there and just shoot, 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 shoot threes without really another efficient way of scoring, you're trying to get some some points or put your opponent um, in a where they can be in foul trouble, um, then, then more times than not, you know, when you look at the law of averages, we're going to lose 40% of the time. We're probably going to win 60% of the time. We're probably going to lose because that's just your three point percentage. Uh, we're not going to hit it every single time. So we got to find different ways to use some of the things that we have to, to, to make an advantage, but it's not down low. It's not going to be down low is what it is. Robert says, still uh, glad we won. Number one issue is still rebounding. Showed flashes. I think the future is bright. Really need a true big man. JG3, good Lord. I feel like him and Gary A are going to be special together. So, yeah, coming in together, there's no doubt. I mean, like I said, Gary A, he's got to, you know, he was preseason projected 26 pick. In the NBA draft, <laughs> you remember? So uh, there is right. definitely the talent is definitely there. It's the transition yeah. from, it's the transition from you know, high school or wherever he was to, to college, and it's just a matter of of as far as Joe Girard goes, I mean he's gonna get it. He's gonna adapt quicker than than Gary A. Obviously, and he's already we're already he seeing already has. It. yeah we're already seeing it. So I mean. I was on the JG3 bandwagon a long time ago, and um, he's just an athlete, man. So I, he's just he's yep. just driven, and he's and he's just motivated, man. He's just he's that guy. He's that guy, and I just can't wait for the for to just watch this kid throughout his career. So any, anyway, uh, Brandon Facebook says scary win. I like that we won and in a way struggled at home against a bad five and six Oakland team. These are the cupcakes that we should not even need to have a conversation over. We think, Joe. Uh, I mean, he he goes he goes shoulda coulda woulda. Yeah, shoulda coulda woulda. Um, you know, but you know, looking forward and just to wrap this up. As far as Oakland goes, and we'll we'll talk about North Florida here in a second, but uh, just to wrap this up, you know, you look around and we're not in bad shape right now. We're really not. And we've already no. played two conference games with one of them being a loss. So, you know, 
it's not terrible right now. And I think coach said 15, 20 games. Well, we're going to be at what? Um, what are we at now? 11. So we'll be at thir- yep. 13 here and then hit, hit conference play. And, and, you know, we got, we start out at home. So in the, the crowd will be there. So, and hopefully, you know, I think we'll be, we'll show up once conference play starts, you know, it'll be after the holidays, students will be back. Right. And um, we'll get the crowd back. But the crowd, the point is that the crowd does help. And it's, no, it does it, help. it's easy for me and you, Joe, and, and people could point it out and make, you guys don't even live in Syracuse. You know, well, <clears throat> if we did, <laughs> we, we would be yeah. there. But we, if this is Butts for Candy Nuts, we all have a Merry Christmas. It's easy for us to sit here and, and say, you know, make some noise. But, I mean, when I'm there, I make noise. I leave their horse. Right. So, oh, yeah. I mean, 100%. But we can't really 100% to say that if we lived there, we'd be at that game either. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, I did live there and I didn't go to all those games. So, right. Yeah. You know, um, so there's yeah. some instances where you can't, but again, it, it comes down to if you're if you plan on going, then might as well be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. If you're going, you know, let people know you're there. That's all. So, uh, anyways, thank you everybody to uh, that participated in fan feedback. We really appreciate it. So, yes, thank um, you. Yeah, it's um, it's the show. It's the part of the show that you know I love. I just like. To, to try to find some diversity. Last night was a little quiet, so um, wait, I did my best. So um, the seven and six. Yeah, you did good. You did good, kid. Thank you, thank you. The seven and six North Florida Ospreys. They'll visit the dome this Saturday at six p.m. The all-time series between North Florida and Syracuse sits at one and zero in favor of the Orange. Uh, with a seventy-seven to seventy-one win in two thousand sixteen, Andrew White. He led Syracuse with 26 points in that game. The Ospreys coming off of a 98-81 to 81 loss to the Florida State Seminoles. The uh, starting five averaged 44.5 from three. And 6'7", uh, 227-pound forward Carter Hendrickson, he averages 40.2 from three by himself. Uh, he also leads the team in scoring with 16.2 points a game and in rebounding with 8.5 rebounds a game. 6'1", 193-pound guard Ivan Gandia Rosa leads in assists with 6.2, and he follows up Hendrickson with, in points per game with 14.8, Joe. So we heard Joe, or we heard Joe, we heard Coach in his press conference talk about the three-shooting ability of North Florida. And this is a team that if they can get hot from outside, um, playing catch-up could be tough. This could be a tough game. Yeah. This is one of those games, again, <clears throat> when you look at the, the mid-major schools, uh, certain conferences, uh, usually sometimes, I mean, there's levels down there that we don't even really ever really worry about because we're not fans of those schools. But again, Oakland and, and the school that they are, Horizon League, uh, they traditionally, some of the better teams in those those leagues have, have size. Um, so now when it comes to North Florida in the Atlantic Sun, uh, they're not usually known for their size. And that's the one thing that I see is, as far as a glaring weakness with, with – with them, um, they have one guy that's six eight that maybe plays ten minutes a game, uh, but other than that, they just have six seven guards, six seven forwards, and then guards that are a little bit shorter. So uh, they don't have a true center, and that's going to probably be one thing that we're going to be able to take advantage of. And actually, um, it's it's actually maybe timing wise. Um, good as far as us talking about um, being able to get points down low and things like that. I think this is a game where our big guys can actually take advantage of this and, and maybe gain some confidence and, and actually take advantage of the size. But um, you're absolutely right about the three point um, situation. Uh, they shoot a ton of threes. So if you were a fan, right, Sean, and you watch like Syracuse games, mm-hmm. Would would you think that Syracuse they they shoot a lot of threes, right? They shot a lot last game. Thirty four is a lot. Well, last game, but either either way, just you overall, shoot, is, they, yeah, they shoot a lot of threes. Yeah, yeah, especially they shoot a lot of threes. Yeah, right. We've so Syracuse they've shot two hundred ninety six threes so far this season. So far this season, okay. 
North Florida uh-huh. is number one in one in the nation. Oh. They have attempted four hundred and twenty eight <laughs> three pointers this year. <laughs> and they're hitting now, 40. Al- albeit albeit they have played thirteen games to our eleven. Sure, true, but that's double. But Eh, it's just not under necessarily double. double, but you're talking about another 132 oh, okay. attempts. So, um, yeah, that's what they do. And again, you looked and you talked and you spoke on um, their few, their three point percentage. I mean, they got three guys that I think have shot. There's one guy like shooting 66 percent, but how many has he shot? I don't know exactly how many they've shot, but I know that they got two guys that have shot over. 93 pointers this year. Mm. And I think another one's got about 89. Another guy's got 59. I mean, it's. Well, the guy that's it's, shot it's, 66%. He's only shot. Yeah, he only he's only shot six. Oh, okay. Right. So it's. Yeah. But. Wahad. I mean, the Aminu. other. Right. But the other guys, I mean, you're talking Henderson shoots nope. 40%. He's shot 87. Gandia Gandia Rosa. Has forty uh, percent. He shot in uh, ninety of them, and JT Escobar shoots at forty percent, and he shot ninety five. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you're talking. You got we got three players that, and two of them are six seven. So they're going to be able to shoot over our guy. I mean, they can shoot over guards. So uh, that's the one thing that's definitely it's going to pose a problem. And if we're going to have another crowd like we did. That's going to kind of be... Well, it'll be Saturday. It's a like, 6 o'clock game on Saturday. So, I mean, that's kind of hit or miss too, though, Joe, huh? But you're looking at it. You were looking at a Tuesday game against Oakland. I mean, and, yeah. you know, I mean... I, I, I understand. At least Saturday, I mean, you can look at it as a date night, you know? You can get some people out there, some younger yeah, people. But uh, yeah. you got to hope that we get a little bit more crowd support because if it's a quiet dome... And those baskets are big for those North Florida shooters. Then uh, it could night. be, could be a scary night. And you know, the just for what it's worth. I mean, I'm not like some. I just feel like Syracuse has a hard time closing out sometimes. If they can get good ball movement, Syracuse is always having a hard time closing out. And if you give yeah. if you give a team like this time to shoot i mean that's what they do like like joe said and then it's gonna be it could be bad that's all this this but they is could the have game a bad night they could have a bad night shooting yeah they could and again going and based upon like ken okay. palm when we talked about it uh oakland they were ranked i think 172 like i said <laughs> smack dab in the middle of this team uh north florida is ranked 189th so kind of in a similar situation uh i mean they've gotten but beat. again they've gotten beat Oh, they've gotten beat. They haven't really beaten a great team. They haven't beaten, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no one stuck so, out to me. So, right. So again, this is kind of this is the game that can kind of, I don't want to say a race, but help. What the, um, kind of what people like how they look at our big men, uh, Sidibe, Dolzai, Garrier, all those guys. I mean, this this. <laughs> This is a perfect matchup for them to go out there and do work and to actually kind of change the stigma of what people think, at least for a game, about those guys. Because this is a this is a game that most likely, I mean, we're going to have to push out our guards. We're going to have to get out there on those shooters. There's no doubt about it. Those those centers and those forwards down there, they're going to be left alone against those guys. They're going to be undersized, but they're going to have to make the right plays. And if we can't take advantage of the size against a team like this, then – uh, yeah, the It'll outcome, a, the outlook, the outlook turns a little bit bleaker so at that point. So this would be a good benchmark, Joe, to see what, what this, what these guys can do. Basically. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. fair enough. I mean, that's, we got a lot of matchups that are similar to this. I mean, there's going to be some good matchups in the ACC. There's going to be know? some matchups, but we haven't had matchups, a lot of matchups like this. No, one we've been, we we've, have had on some, paper. we've had some very large centers to deal with or or large right. forwards it's been right. yeah it's been you know look yeah, I mean, at the draws Beheim's going to have to yeah he's going to have to play this a little bit better cuz you know a lot of times you have some guys you know some teams that have size they got players down low that 
they like to get to the hole, this, this, and that. And then, you know, they kind of crunch down in the two, three zone and force the team to try to fall in love with the three, right? Like, you don't got to do that with this team. You know, have, they are, are coming to shoot the three. So, right, you you're know not trying, you're not out there trying yeah. to dare them to shoot the three. You're out there. I mean, they got three, four guys on the court at all time that can hit that three. And that's what you have to, that's what you have to look at. So, again, spotlight's going to be right in the middle. And this is a perfect time for, for those guys to step up and 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 hopefully gain some experience, some confidence, and and change maybe how people fans talk about them. Yeah. All right. Well, this Saturday at six o'clock, we're going to see how that goes. Look, we are putting together early signing day. We haven't not talked about it, and the reason we haven't really talked about it uh, because we're going to be putting something together for it specifically for Syracuse football early, early signing day and all yep. of the uh, all the goings on that have happened so far so it was interesting <laughs> yeah we'll have a we'll have a little special on it joe will educate us all give us the breakdown and um, we'll probably do that soon soon so I don't like. I like put, that. I like I that safe. I like that safe. We're not going to put a day on that. Because, I'm not putting a day on it. Every time I put a day on was, something, it doesn't happen. So yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, yeah. So, it's starting to it's starting to leak out like that was one of a weekend day. So you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just, this we're going to put it soon. We're going to put it together, and we're just going to have some fun with it, and and. Um, uh, we'll put it out as a little bonus episode. So anyway, there's that. Look, hey, I want to thank everybody for uh, listening. Thanks, everybody, who participated in fan feedback. Once again, thanks to my bookie. Go there. Use the promo code chair. They'll match you dollar for dollar. Go to mybookie.ag and do that. Uh, Bluetooth.com. Use the promo code armchair. Just pay $5 shipping when you do that, and you get of the first shipment free, except for the $5, which is not really free, but, you know, that's what – <laughs> that's how they get you i guess <laughs> so you gotta uh, make, they gotta make money somehow so anyways we're out of here for joe. all this time and you just picked it picked up that up no 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 i've definitely not picked i always feel stupid when i say get your first shipment free when you use a special promo code armchair just pay five dollars shipping and i'm always like wait hold on <laughs> it's not free it's not free anyway all right well shipping's not free true that true that all right for joe Thanks, guys, by the way. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Thanks for listening to the Q's Militia Podcast, the fan's voice with Sean and Joe.